Hi guys, my name is Elle and welcome back or welcome to my channel. It's been a while, um, but I thought I'd sit down and kind of just share with you my review of my first term of university. If you're new here, I am a first year natural scientist at Cambridge. It's been a term. I'm back home for Christmas. I've been back home nearly two weeks now. I was actually flown by, but getting ready for my January exam. Today's video is gonna be quite chatty. Um, it's basically me reflecting on my first term at university. So I'm gonna be talking things about like freshers week, the workload, am I enjoying? Like, just all of that and things I want to do differently next term. The big one is probably why haven't you filmed? Um, I just got there and I didn't settle in like for like two, three weeks and I genuinely did not want to pick up a camera and so I kind of just focused on trying to settle in and get used to where I was um, and then the workload hit. <laughs> so we start with Freshers Week. I didn't go clubbing once in Freshers Week. Um, I went to a bop which is kind of like a college party. I did find it very hard to make friends at first. Um, I kind of just stayed with my staircase which is kind of like my flat group. It was actually quite stressful. It wasn't even a full week. I arrived Saturday and lecture started the Thursday. I crammed so much in to that five days and skipped some things because I couldn't make because I couldn't even make them. But like the main positive is that I did meet my best friend who is my upstairs neighbour. So that was very lucky of me. Freshers week ended, lecture started. So I thought I'd talk a bit about lectures. Lectures are quite different from school. Um, I went to a college though, and our lessons were called lectures, our teachers were called lecturers, but even then that was quite a small group setting, like the biggest class I had was like 25. And you come here and you're in the BMS, which is the biggest lecture hall, and there's like 500 people there. And that is pretty crazy. Every lecturer is different and they each have their own styles, which is a bit frustrating because whenever you have a new lecturer, you have to get used to how they teach. Um, some are very fast, some are slow, some are boring, some are very exciting. And like genuinely, there are good lecturers. Some of them can't explain stuff as well as you would hope. Um, some of the notes aren't good. Some of them, some of the notes are like everything you need. It's very much a mix of the draw, I won't lie. And the main thing is you are chucked straight in at Cambridge. Um, you probably are in every single uni. I just could only base it on my own experience. But yeah, within the first, after the first lecture, you could probably answer like three or four questions on the question sheet, which is actually quite a lot for like one lecture. The way I can describe a lecture is that this is all of the information I'm the lecturer and you are me sitting there and the lecturer is just chucking stuff at you and it is really up to you what you do with all the information because you need to figure out what's the most important bit, what do I need to focus on and what do I need to review, it's all down to you and there's no like set specifications so, like with A-levels I would compare my the given notes to the spec and focus on stuff, there's no specification what's anything that's been in the lectures is examinable <laughs> which is very stressful because there is a lot and trying to decide what's the important bit is something that i am working on currently and the big one that people always say when whenever you say about cambridge is saturday lectures they're fine <laughs> um saturdays don't really exist anymore like the weekend as a concept is gone Being up at like seven on a Saturday and then going to lectures for nine is actually fine. It helps that me and my friends we all cycle in as a group so it's it's just doable and the roads are so much quieter on a Saturday so it's actually quite nice to cycle in. Talking about lectures I also thought I'd say a bit about practicals. There are so many practicals in a week. A material science practical that is an hour and a half. Three earth science practicals that are an hour each. Physics one every other week that's four hours. Meeks I think it was two till six I want to say or three till seven there was an hour and a half of scientific computing labs. It's a lot of practicals. They're okay. Like I, I find them quite stressful. I much more prefer the theoretical side of stuff. So physics experiments, oh my goodness, they are stressful. 
um, they're all marked and they all count towards your end of year grade. So I'm just like, oh. Um, yeah, in one of our physics one, it got to the point where our demonstrator was teaching us how to count to five. So you do kind of lose your mind a little bit in that lab. Earth science though, the demonstrators are actually so helpful. So they're all PhD students and um, yeah, they're really nice, really approachable and you can ask all the questions you have about the lectures to them. As well as lectures and practicals, you also have supervisions. They're the main selling point of Cambridge, I guess. So they are small group teaching. Um, basically, my supervisions are either in pairs and there is one that is in a three. Definitely found them quite scary at first. It's very nerve wracking giving in work and having somebody who's an expert rip it to shreds. Um, but, they, but they are nice. The hand-ins, um, I did two in person and two digital because they kind of expected me to deliver it to the departments and I couldn't do that. So I was like, PDF. And they were like, okay, so I was like, yes, PDFs. The amount of work, right, hmm, it varies week to week, honestly. Sometimes you can be set for if science, like an essay. So that'll take you about, you know, an hour of research, planning, writing it, checking it, drawing all the diagrams. And then you've got maths, which is just like 10 questions, but each question might have like six parts. <laughs> So it very much varies week to week and subject to subject. Um, quite consistently, I'd say maths have the highest workload, um, but that's just because it, maths is all about practicing to get better. Overall, my review of supervisions is that they are very useful, but they do have awkward silences relying on your supervision partner to answer a question which you have no idea what's going on. I do like my supervisors, though some of them are quite approachable and I feel like I can ask my stupid questions. So following on all the scheduled work, now I thought I'd talk about the actual workload itself. So on average, you're supposed to spend 20 hours a week on supervision work. So that's um, five hours per subject because I take four subjects or four modules. It's about 25 hours of actual scheduled, so like lectures, practical supervision. That comes to about 25 hours. 45 hour week. Was I doing more than 45? Probably. Um, the thing that isn't included is the commute, right? You, you're biking around town constantly and those, you know, 15 minute cycles, they add up, okay? <laughs> the workload definitely fluctuates, like at the start term, you're kind of like, okay, 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 and then it goes up and up and up and the way I describe it is drowning but gracefully because you always manage to just grab enough air because you always manage to submit all of your supervision work on time. But as soon as you take that gasp of air, you get a whole new week's worth of work set and you're drowning again. It is intense, it's tiring, you do find yourself procrastinating, um, but you do kind of just get over it and make sure you make your supervision deadlines. That is the most important thing. As long as you get that work handed in, you're good. The thing I wanted to touch on was the analogy of going from big fish, small pond to small fish, giant pond was what we were told in Freshers Week and it's kind of demoralising, I won't lie, but it makes sense. You've come from probably a school where you've always excelled, you've always got the top grades, to a place where everyone has gotten the top grades all their life. You do get imposter syndrome quite badly. I think it was slightly worse for me because I got in through the summer pool, so there's these people who've known since like January that they were coming here and I knew about a month before I arrived. You do very clearly see educational gaps. So state school, this is grammar, this is private, this is international, like you, there's a lot of different educational backgrounds and it's quite clear <laughs> which educational backgrounds do people come here and not find the transition as difficult, I guess. Moving on from kind of academics, I thought I'd talk a bit about the social side of university. The big thing is that formals are actually pretty fun. So I don't really go to a Harry Potter vibe college. I go to Churchill, which is quite modern, I guess. Formals are still really fun. Like in Churchill, it's not compulsory to buy a gown or wear a gown, but actually a lot of people in my hero group do have gowns and we all wear them. So it does kind of feel pretty good. I went to, I think, four formals this term in total, which 
it's quite a lot and I've gone through all of my formal dresses so I'm going shopping before next term. So societies wise I'm part of I think two or three, um, not many, I'm part of the Art Soccer Churchill and the Chaos Society which is like a society aimed at educating the public about science. Um, I do wish I joined more, I kind of put all my eggs in one basket for archery because I was really excited to have a go at it and then they were oversubscribed and they did a lottery to see who could join and I didn't make the cut. So, and then by that point it was already like three weeks into term and I was like, oh, I don't know what to join now. <laughs> so I kind of just left it. But there is a refreshers fair um, in January. So I'm going to go to there and see if anything takes my fancy because I would like maybe a sporty society to do. Social circle, pretty much people on my course. I'm surrounded by like minded people who, you know, we all kind of enjoy the same stuff, learning, science, studying. So you kind of get along with everyone pretty well, actually. Flatmates, or we call them staircases. So you have a staircase and the flats come off of the staircase or your room, to be honest. So, ooh, <laughs> I thought I'd be on a staircase full of freshers and I showed up and my floor is third and fourth years. All undergraduates still doing their bachelors, but third and fourth years, I am the only first year on my floor. The floor above is all first years, but it was a bit of a shock when I came in on freshers week and it's just fourth years. But yeah, if you go to uni and your entire flat or staircase is freshers, that's probably a good thing. It's slightly, it made freshers week a lot harder, I think, because of our staircases were like 14 freshers grouped together, whilst mine was just four of us. Um, Churchill itself as a college, I'm actually loving. So the food is great. Um, they always had at least two or three vegan options, a vegetarian option, and then the meat option. Um, you're definitely catered for as a vegan here. Uh, I've been predominantly eating vegan food since I got there. It's also lovely to come home after lectures and just know there is warm food that you can have and you don't have to cook it. Probably spent so much money in hall um, this term. It's like decent price, but honestly it depends on what serving you get because some of them are so stingy, but others just like put so much on. So it is luck of the draw. My room at Churchill is huge. I think I'll do a room tour video next term. Um, it's massive, it also costs a lot, but it's massive <laughs> and it's an ensuite and it's pretty nice actually. It's a very big room, but it does get quite cold sometimes. Lack of oven in the kitchen is actually not a problem. I mean, me and my friends managed to cook a whole Christmas dinner with no oven and um, everything was air fried, but that's beside the point. <laughs> like for me, cause I, I pretty much, I just make lunch. Um, I kind of live off of microwavable rice and soup and <laughs> baked beans and pasta, so I don't use an oven and it's fine. If you didn't want to eat at hall, probably it would be nice, but I know the people who don't eat at hall tend to just have air fryers, so. The library. Mm, the library. Uh, I love Churchill's library. My favourite bit is the Bevan. Um, <laughs> I like the desks next to the door. And I also like the armchairs with the lap desks, like, it's so nice. And the big table in the middle, like, me and my friends took up the whole table studying. That was so much fun. Yeah, it's quite strict, but, um, it's fine. It's a library. Like, it's got, Churchill's actually really good though, because it does have all the recommended reading for all my courses. Yay! So, haven't had to go to a department library yet. Now, like, other stuff to talk about is cycling, so... I thought I was going to be walking and I lasted two days before I bought a bike at Freshers Fair. It was ungodly overpriced, please come to Cambridge with your own bike or bring one from home or buy one in your home city. Do not buy a bike in Cambridge, it's a terrible idea. The prices are insane. £100 for this bike, that's basically worth like 15 20 quid. but I was desperate, I needed a bike and... <laughs> There was a bike there. I actually quite enjoy cycling. The taxis are lethal, but all other cars kind of know like how to drive around with bikes everywhere. Roundabouts aren't too much of a problem. My sense of time though, oh wow, it gets warped. And it's like the start of term is quite slow and you're like, oh, okay, okay, it's week four, it's week five. Oh my God, it's week seven. Um, 
Oh, now it's week eight. Oh, it's still week eight. Oh, it's still week eight. Oh, I'm going home in a few days. Ah, oh, I'll pack tomorrow, I'll pack tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I'm going home today. That's kind of like the sense of time. <laughs> um, yeah, your yeah, time, time is not linear at Cambridge. Don't know why, it runs slightly differently. The week five blues. So that is an expression commonly used at Cambridge to describe week five. Week five depression, basically. I didn't get that. Okay, I'll tell you about my feelings. So up until week three, I was trying to settle in. From freshers, from move-in day to about week three, I was just finding my feet. I find it quite hard to adapt to new surroundings, so it took me a while to kind of get into routine. And then week five, no, week three to week five, I was a student, you know, I was getting to lectures, I was doing all my work, I was, I was doing good. And then week six hit. Um, <laughs> Week six, I was purely surviving. Um, and then week seven, I've written down in my notes, was no man's land. Um, I got ill in week seven. So week seven doesn't exist for me because I was so ill, I missed an entire week of lectures. Um, <laughs> but I, like I say, I missed lectures. I didn't go to them in person. I watched them. I watched all the recordings. So I still did all the work. I was just, oh, I couldn't move. <laughs> um, I was just in bed trying to survive and then week eight was like army crawling you know hands and knees to the finish line but yeah it's all good fun and um, so no i didn't get week five blues it was week six that killed me off week seven put me in a coffin and then week eight i came back alive actually week eight was all right <laughs> so what's it like living in cambridge um, it's great for cycling. <laughs> um, there are so many tourists though, so cycling down King's Parade twice a day, it's actually up to four times a day sometimes, is horrendous because they just walk straight out. They have no sense of their surroundings. They're just like, ooh, take picture of scaffolding because King's is covered in scaffolding. It's not even pretty at the moment. So that's the only thing, tourists. The uni bus is very unreliable. It says, oh, it'll be here. It won't be there. It'll never be there. Um, <laughs> cycle or walk, do not rely on the U1 or the U2. Um, the, the actual like Cambridge buses though, like park and ride ones, they're brilliant. They're always on time. Um, the taxis are lethal. I think I've mentioned this. Uh, there are only Sainsbury's only Sainsbury's like I am a Tesco girl right I miss my club card I miss Tesco there are only Sainsbury's in Cambridge like there are but they're so far away from like the college and stuff coming from a very small town in South Wales Cambridge is very busy um <laughs> but it's quieter at night much quieter at night than back than at home did reality meet my expectations I think so. Um, it was harder than I thought, um, which I should have guessed it would be very hard, but I didn't think, I didn't consider how hard it would be because you're not just juggling the work, you're juggling living alone as well, being away from your family, your friends, like your hometown, living in a different country. Um, and it's draining. I do actually enjoy it. Like the, the content is so interesting and like the fulfillment when you get a question and you get an answer and it makes sense or it matches like the little end of line answers so worth it um, i can't really tell what my expectations were i knew it's gonna be hard but i think it's harder than i thought it would be but i'm kind of getting used to it now what would i do differently next term there are quite a few things i do differently next term i'd kind of just show up copy down whatever i needed to and then do the questions. And I thought that would be enough, but it's not. Um, I wouldn't even fully use supervisions. Like I wouldn't ask some questions. And I think that was a mistake. I need to, I don't really have a full plan for next term, um, but I know I need to start revising during term because 
the way I'm revising now is I want to just focus on questions but I don't fully understand the content so I'm having to go over the content again so I feel like the understanding the content should all be shifted to be term time so then holidays are just for doing past papers so that's the way I want to do things differently and what would that involve probably making sure that I, sh I go to the lecture I think going to the lecture about doing reading before is fine because there is no reading i can just look over the notes that i'm going to do but i wouldn't understand what was going on so i think after the lecture i need to do lecture reviews like go over it make my notes make my flashcards all during term so that's what i'm going to be working on in lent term coming up that's all i've got written down kind of like note wise for my reflection please feel free to leave any questions in the comments of specific things um, or if you have a lot of questions, maybe I can make a separate video. I have survived the Michaelmas of my first year. Um, quite an achievement, I would say. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Have a lovely Christmas!